On today's show, FCA will pay a bounty to anyone who discovers how to hack into its cars. Land Rover introduces autonomous technology for off-road driving, and golfers can ride around in comfort in this new cart from Mercedes. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the news program for those who really need to know what's happening in the automotive industry. Well, hey all you hackers out there, here's a way to make some money with your hacking skills. FCA will pay a bounty to anyone who discovers a way to hack into its cars. It will pay anywhere from $150 up to $1,500, depending on how serious the security breach is. FCA is partnering with a San Francisco company called Bug Crowd, which will run the program. Here's the founder of Bug Crowd, Casey Ellis, explaining how it works. So the way a bug bounty program works is it's essentially a crowd of researchers from all around the world. Uh, for us, we run a platform that allows customers to run contests where they compete to find vulnerabilities and submit them in exchange for cash and social recognition. And really that's how it's gonna work. The first to find each unique vulnerability that's within scope of the program will get a reward. Uh, and obviously the goal is to have those vulnerabilities be fixed before the bad guys come along and do it for real. Paying cash awards to hackers who uncover vulnerabilities is nothing new. It's been a common practice in the tech community for years. Tesla was the first automaker to start doing this with Bug Crowd in 2013 and post the winners to what it calls its wall of fame. Tesla even includes bounties for those who found ways to hack into its corporate computers, not just its cars. And no doubt, we'll see more automakers announcing similar programs. Cybersecurity is now such a high priority issue with automakers that last year they banded together to form what they call the Auto ISAC, or Automotive Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Automakers and suppliers can join the ISAC to learn about the latest ways that hackers are breaking into cars and how to protect themselves. This is also a common practice in the tech industry, which realized that it could react much faster to the black hats by sharing information on who was trying to hack into their systems and how. Auto ISAC is affiliated with the Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers and includes almost every manufacturer selling vehicles in the U.S. market. Volvo just joined the Auto ISAC on Monday, and it also includes major suppliers such as Delphi and Denso. And still to come, BMW and Daimler expand their use of 3D printed components. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. BMW has been using 3D printed parts in the Rolls-Royce Phantom since 2012 and is now ready to expand its use of the technology. It has started testing with planar printing technology. The process BMW uses works by first applying a thin layer of base powder material. A printing head then lays down liquid material on top of that, but at virtually the same time, the layers are fused using infrared radiation. By doing it this way, production times can be up to 10 times faster and some components can be available in just a few days. BMW says it will first use planar technology in prototypes, but will expand into series production over the long term. And in other 3D printing news, Daimler trucks will use 3D printing to make spare parts for its vehicles, some of which are several decades old. But rather than ship the parts across the globe, Daimler will just send a digital blueprint to a location that's closer to its final destination. Parts include spring caps, air and cable ducts, clamps, mountings, and control elements. If you like to golf, but want a more upscale ride around the course, Mercedes has the solution for you. It just introduced a golf cart loaded with amenities. But even though it carries a Mercedes-Benz badge, as you can see, this thing looks more like a smart car. Features include Bluetooth, a refrigerator under the bench seat, a 10-inch touchscreen, and a storage tray under the dash to hold golf balls. The electric cart can travel up to 50 miles on a charge and has a top speed of 19 miles per hour. Mercedes developed the cart with a company called Guerrilla, 
which will build two prototypes to get customer feedback for the final version that's expected to go on sale next year. Coming up next, Nissan and JLR introduce new self-driving technology. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Autonomy could be the most transformative technology to hit the auto industry in 100 years, and it seems that everyone wants to get in on the action. While most companies are focusing on regular driving, Land Rover is demonstrating how the technology can be applied to off-road. One of the features can warn the driver about overhead obstructions, such as a tree branch. Another feature senses uneven terrain and then adjusts the speed of the car in order to keep the ride smooth. And lastly, Land Rover is using wireless vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle technology to create a connected convoy for off-road driving. And in related news, Jaguar Land Rover also announced plans to test 100 autonomous vehicles in the UK over the next four years. This year, engineers will test the vehicles on a 41-mile test track before eventually driving the cars out on public roads. Nissan has been more bullish than most manufacturers as to when it will introduce autonomous technology into its cars, and the company just launched a suite of semi-autonomous functions called ProPilot. The system is designed for highway use in single-lane traffic and will automatically keep a set distance from the vehicle in front, which includes braking, accelerating, and steering to keep the vehicle in the center of the lane. ProPilot will first be launched in the Serena minivan in Japan in August and then in the Qashqai SUV in Europe in 2017. There are also plans for the technology to be introduced in the U.S. and China as well. Well, hey, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours this Thursday when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll have the new Buick LaCrosse in the studio along with Jeff Janssens, the chief engineer on the car. So join John and Gary for some of the best insights into what's going on in the automotive industry. And with that, we wrap up today's report. Please join us again right back here tomorrow.